Panasonic GH6 is due to be announced sometime this year. Like many filmmakers, I'm interested in Panasonic cameras. There's only one glaring issue, autofocus. Will the new Panasonic GH6 finally dump depth from defocus autofocus and replace it with some sort of phase detect autofocus system? This and more after the intro. Hi, I'm Simon. Thanks for tuning in to The Ordinary Filmmaker. Subscribe to get notification of new videos like this one so you don't miss any news, rumors, gear reviews, or tutorials. And a big thanks to Atomos for sponsoring The Ordinary Filmmaker. I'm using the Ninja 5 external recorder for all my studio work as it saves me a ton of time in post. Want to speed up your projects in post? Well then use my links down below to purchase your own Ninja. And now, for the news. I was keenly interested in picking up the Panasonic GH5 back around, well, 2018. It has decent low light, similar to most comparable APS-C system cameras at the time. It also has amazing IBIS and a ton of video features for the price. Panasonic's dedicated to developing their cameras and firmware updates long after you bought them. So what held me back, you ask? Well, one thing, the lack of a trustworthy and reliable autofocus system. You see, for my run and gun work where my subject is constantly in motion, pulling focus manually isn't an option. So I waited a bit. I heard rumors of a full frame GH5, and that actually turned out to be the S1. I hoped that Panasonic would finally provide us with a reliable phase detect autofocus system, but they didn't. I could see hunting in the background, and I was disappointed, so I continued my search for my perfect camera. Then last year, Panasonic released the S5, a full-frame entry-level mirrorless camera. Once again, Panasonic kept the DFD autofocus system. While improved again, the DFD still provided untrustworthy and reliable autofocus. And are you thinking that I'm exaggerating? Well, this is what Gerald Undone said when talking about the S5 six months ago. Did the autofocus system improve? Not in any meaningful way. Often when Panasonic talks about improving their autofocus, they talk about how the detection methods have improved. But what I find gets better is the predictability of the system. So, has Panasonic finally realized that their depth from defocus autofocus system doesn't work? I mean, it's right in the name, depth from defocus. Now, I'm going to address that later with a quote directly from Yamani-san. But first, back to Gerald. The problem is, I never know what's going to trigger Panasonic to just completely lose focus and seemingly refuse to come back. And even when it's tracking correctly, it still pulses. For some reason, Panasonic thinks it can make DFD work. They keep telling us how it's improved, yet year after year, Panasonic worldwide sales fall into that other category. Total sales of Panasonic cameras worldwide, interchangeable that's both DSLR and mirrorless, is somewhere under 3% worldwide. Now, DP Review recently interviewed Yamani-san, the director of Panasonic's imaging division, and Yamani-san was asked, are you working on improving DFD to make it more competitive with phase detection autofocus from other brands? Now granted, it's definitely a loaded question. Even DP Review doesn't feel that DFD autofocus system is on par with other camera companies. Are you ready for this? Yamani-san answered, autofocus is a technology that's constantly advancing. Yes, it's definitely advancing. Um, there's been so many great changes in the last couple of years. So many innovations. We now have reliable animal eye detection and tracking, and we can even track down clowns. And yes, we know you've got more focus points and the detection's faster. Canon and Sony can even get their cameras to lock focus on moving birds, insects, and other animals. But we can't get Panasonic's DFD autofocus to reliably lock onto a subject that isn't moving without hunting or seemingly getting bored and going off and doing its own thing. Yamani goes on, with the recently released Lumix DC-S5, we have evolved the DFD algorithm based on the needs and feedback of creators, and we've received positive response from the market following the release. Who are they talking to? What positive feedback? Are they listening to positive reviews only? Well, they're not listening to me, and they're certainly not listening to Gerald Undone, and they're not paying attention to the dwindling sales. Look, I, I get it. I understand there's a segment of the population that prefers pulling focus manually that the Panasonic cameras have good tools to help you do this. But these filmmakers are professionals and are in the minority. Most ordinary filmmakers, moms, dads, colleagues, and friends, well, they want reliable autofocus. It's one less thing that we don't have to worry about. Improved, it might be. 
But with sales in the dumpster, the market's telling you, Panasonic, that despite producing otherwise excellent cameras, and they are, Panasonic makes some of the best cameras out there, people don't want a camera without a reliable autofocus system for video needs. However, we recognize that there's still issues that need to be improved to reach perfection when it comes to autofocus. We're currently considering further improvements, such as improving the processing capacity with new hardware and improving the accuracy with new software algorithms. Try as hard as you can to train your dog to quack like a duck, and it won't. Sure, it will get better over time, but only a duck can quack like a duck. And a DFD autofocus system, while suitable for stills, will never work reliably with video in any sort of trustworthy way. Canon and Sony can focus on birds in motion reliably, focusing on their eyes. Canon can even focus on other animals reliably like dogs and cats and horses. And I've even gotten it to focus on insects. Now Fuji does a good job too, and Nikon also has a reliable autofocus system. In fact, Nikon gave up on their DFD autofocus system for video years ago. Panasonic's the sole company to still use it for video. Now while Panasonic's working on resolving issues still present, the competition has moved on. With declining worldwide sales in the ILC segment, a global economic slowdown unseen since the 1970s, Panasonic can't afford to keep pushing their DFD autofocus system to ordinary filmmakers, or even photographers that are considering getting into video. Why go with the fifth best when you can go with number one? Now the interview went further, but well, I just didn't care. It's 2021. I can't see myself wasting time on a camera system that can't deliver a reliable, trustworthy autofocus system, and nor can I recommend one to you. I understand that this is harsh, but year after year, Panasonic states that they understand they have issues to work out, and every year they make minor improvements, but still, the cameras hunt or lose focus without reason. I'm not willing to shoot a 30-minute video not knowing if it's going to hunt all the time or lose focus or never come back. And at a time when the competition between Canon and Sony is heating up, Panasonic Still's hybrid cameras seem less and less relevant. Am I being too harsh? Let me know in the comments section down below. Canon discontinued another EF lens. The Canon EF 40mm f2.8 STM was officially discontinued by Canon. This isn't the first EF lens being discontinued. In these challenging times, Canon's taking a hard look at their inventory, and if it's not selling, it's gone. And I'm not the only one that thinks so. Canon Rumors suspects that we're going to see a bunch of EF lenses sent to the pasture over the next 12 months. Stay tuned, and I'll let you know when I know more. And now, let's go behind the scenes. In this segment of Behind the Scenes, I want to show you James Hayes' entry into the Spring Challenge. Not sure what the Spring Challenge is? Well, then you must have been hiding under a rock for most of this month. Probably, I guess it was late late February, early March, I came up with the idea of a spring challenge with the village mayor. We did it last year, but I didn't have any prizes. And the whole purpose of doing this spring challenge was is, well, me personally, I was feeling a little down and a lot of us feel down, especially in the northern climates because winter's so long and cold and there's not a lot of daylight. So I thought, what a better way to pick up everybody's spirits to challenge you to go out there and capture spring in whatever way that means to you. It could be family, it could be life's rebirth, it could be the melting of snow, it could be anything. There were very few stipulations. Um, there were some locations based on legal laws that I can't, we can't have contests in certain countries because, well, it's legal stuff. I don't understand why. And the video had to be at least 30 seconds long, but that was pretty much it. I wanted you to be creative and come up with something that spoke to you. And I reached out to Angelbird asking them if they would like to participate to offer a prize, and they did. So the winner will get a 512 gigabyte CF Express card as well as an Angelbird CF Express card reader. So that's a pretty awesome prize. And right now we have 12 entrants, so your odds of winning are pretty good. So um, before I share James Hayes' video with you, I just want to give you a few more points on how you could potentially win this, because you still have less than a day to actually submit your entry. So when does the contest end? Well, midnight at the end of March, and that's midnight New York or Toronto time. And then what I have to do is I have to go through all the videos once again because a lot of you have produced some really great videos and it's very hard to narrow it down to five. I think at best I've narrowed it down to about seven or eight right now. But what, the reason I have to narrow it down to five is because I'm going to get you to select the winner. I want to I be totally transparent here. So what I'm going to do is over the next 
I guess, several days, um, April 1st or 2nd, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to post a poll in my community forum. It's right on my website. If you have any questions about it, send me a comment and I'll give you the link to it. And I'm going to put out a poll and I'm going to put in each of the top five entries. And the one that gets the most votes, and I think I'm going to keep it till about five days, but the person to get the most votes will win a CF Express card. And well, the Angelbird CF Express card and the card reader. And then for the top five or the all, all entrance in the top five, you're going to get to win an ordinary filmmaker cap. So that's pretty cool, right? And I'm already working on something for April or maybe May. It depends on how long it takes to get this contest out of the way. And once I've selected the winner, I'll ask you to reach out to me on my Facebook page where I can get three pieces of information. I need to know your name, phone number, and address. And then I'm going to send that information to Angelbird and they're going to ship the product or the prize directly to you. Again, for full transparency purposes. As the channel's growing, I'm trying to come up with ways that allows me to hold these contests in a very transparent way so there's no, you know, wizard behind the curtain, so to speak. So let's take a look at James Hayes' entry. But that's it for now. Don't forget to subscribe for your chance to win two Angelbird 128GB AV Pro MK2 V90 SD cards and a dual UHS-2 card reader. Or you could also win a Yulon-Z LED light package with accent lights, an underwater light, and several flat panel lights that you can use for lighting up your subject, or as a great starter kit for starting your own YouTube channel. I'll be awarding these two prize bundles once the channel reaches 30,000 subscribers. And then I'll be offering up other prize bundles in diff different contests and other forms all the way up to 100,000, at which point I'll be awarding a brand new Canon EOS R5 full frame mirrorless camera to one lucky viewer. And on that bombshell, thanks so much for watching The Ordinary Filmmaker. We'll see you again soon.